Hi Libra, welcome to your April 2021 Astro Update. It's Raina here. Well, Libra, um, this is that time of year where there is a lot of activity in the house that you rule. And um, <laughs> it's so funny because I was like, whoa, wait a second. The house that Libra rules is the seventh house. Um, and it's in your chart, it's backwards because you actually have it in your opposite sign of Aries. And so relationship issues can come to the forefront this time of year. And um, so let me just break it down in terms of how much energy is there as the month of April begins. We have the sun there from late March. As a matter of fact, I'm recording this right before the um, spring equinox, Northern Hemisphere style, and that's on the 20th, and that means that that's when the sun goes into Aries, so uh, that begins the party. And um, Venus is in Aries as the month begins. Actually, you know, Venus is probably there right now as I record this or uh, in, in close proximity. And then on the 3rd of April, Mercury is going to go there. So then you're going to have three planets, but they're personal planets too. And that is going to be very, um, you know, affecting you in a more intimate way. And so um, this can simply mean that um, you're really taking uh, a lot of notice of your one-on-one -on -one partnerships for whatever reason. For some people, you might be planning a wedding or, um, you know, <laughs> I don't like to say this, but even planning a divorce because the seventh house can be uh, legal uh, like court cases and uh, court actions. So with Mercury there, there might be the, the documents, the legal documents. Now, I, I when I say something like that, that isn't to make light of uh, relationships breaking up, but it happens. And when it does happen, you will feel a sense of liberation because if you're in uh, an uncomfortable union, that's not good either. But for those people who are very um, much in love, this can be the time when, you know, everything starts to get cooking. And you know what I think about? Why don't people get married in April more often? Because it's such a beautiful month, um, you know, in the springtime at least. Um, yeah, they probably get married in April in, in uh, Australia and New Zealand, places like that, because... Uh, in the United States, the most popular time of year does seem to be the autumn period, um, maybe followed by summer. But um, I just think spring is such a romantic time of year. So um, this is good. Uh, Venus in the marriage or committed partnership sector is really good for uh, marriages and the equivalent type of relationship because you feel that sense of harmony with your partner with mercury there you're talking a lot and the sun is just like a general positive influence on the 11th there's a, a new moon in this area at 22 degrees of aries and that can be uh, a new phase in your relationship or new developments and perhaps um, for some people, if you've had any kind of difficulties in the past, you may be working on your relationship and trying to be more positive within it or proactive in some way. And that means putting more attention on it. And, and you know, Mercury likewise can be uh, communication. Well, duh, of course it's communication, but I mean within that relationship, like more communication um, which is certainly a big part of relationships instead of letting things fester. On the 14th, your ruler Venus goes into Taurus. So your ruler has been in that um, relationship sector, and then it goes into the eighth house. So Taurus is your eighth house, and this is 
an area where Uranus has been taking up residence for the last couple of years and introducing you to astrology and other esoteric uh, types of um, uh, material, especially if it's far out uh, with Aquarius, maybe star seed, galactic kind of stuff. And also um, just intuitive uh, influences. And Venus here is very good for um, intimate types of um, relationships, but I mean, like you can take your uh, love, your affection into this realm that is scorpionic and is like all consuming. And with Libra, this may be something that uh, is new for you or that you're experimenting with, which is um, more, more emotional intimacy and with your, with your committed partnership rather than just kind of on the surface or just playing those roles, but really merging with that person at a deep level. Um, you know, this is the, the, um, house of sex magic. So people that feel a calling in that area may, um, experiment with tantric yoga and that's, you know, to benefit that relationship, but also as a path of, um, spiritual growth and, you know, connecting with source energy in that way. On the 19th, we have, oh, and well, I'm off on that tangent, but Venus can bring money and, and the eighth house is actually a money house, but it's shared resources. So maybe your partner gets a raise or you get money from sources that are not from what you earn. So like a gift or something like that. Inheritance matters. On the 19th, the sun and Mercury go into Taurus. So now that party has gone into the eighth house and this is much more uh, penetrative. Uh, <laughs> that's, that didn't come out right. Um, the, this is the house of conspiracy theories uh, or conspiracy realities, as I call them. Mercury here can make you very, uh, you know, wanting to view things at a, at a deeper level. You're hearing news. You're not taking it at surface value. And some people might say, oh, that, that's such a minor uh, type of possibility for a transit or anything like that. But it's really not because um, some of the things that we are uh, contending with right now it's, yeah, I am going to, I am going to, um, editorialize for one second and I'm going to be very vague, but I just believe, I believe so strongly that, um, if you are hearing, uh, something in the outer world that is really like this clamor to do something that you really, um, search out alternative information that you don't just, um, stick with the, one source. And, you know, even if you're a conspiracy theorist, go to the mainstream source too. do both. You know, I'm like for all around, um, gathering as much information as possible, especially if it's something that could really, um, affect you deeply. And, um, you know, I, I, I feel this way about just about everything in life, whether it's, uh, learning something about history and uh, just taking a textbook version of what happened. No, you know, go seek out other sources and a uh, slants and uh, see what, what they say. There's no harm in viewing things from different perspectives. And, um, but anyway, um, that can give you that, that sense of trying to ferret out the truth. Um, yeah. And the sun here, the same, like very, um, involved in that metaphysical side of life 
On the 23rd, Mars goes into Cancer, and this is another um, cardinal sign to you, Libra. And this is the, the sign before you, the cardinal sign before you. So this is going to be your 10th house of career. And Mars in the 10th is like all systems go, are going, you know, and you may just feel this sense of like wanting to um, give it all that you have uh, career-wise. And your, your, um, your ambition is on fire, you know, but the 10th house is also, uh, authority figures. And so be sure that you're not going to clash with them. Of course, Libra is so, um, <laughs> diplomatic that, uh, that is not really, uh, that would be atypical for you, but stranger things have happened. And so just saying that, and on the 26th, we have a full moon at seven degrees of Scorpio and Scorpio is a sign right after you. It is at seven degrees. So it's, um, an early degree. So if you're an early degree Libra, perhaps this will be in your second house of earned income. And this can be money that is due to you getting a raise and with Mars in the uh, 10th house, you may, uh, get a raise by your gumption, you know, and, and just like going for it. So, um, or getting a bonus or something like that. Now for the rest of you, this is actually going to fall in the first house of the self. And that is maybe ending something, uh, that, that is, um, connected to, your identity or maybe your, your physical appearance. So, you know, I was going to say a woman might cut her hair, but a man might have long hair too. Um, doing something like letting go of it. Now, um, as I record this, we have not had the full moon in Libra at the end of March. So I'm already talking about the end of April here. And so the, for the people who are later in the sign of Libra, this is kind of like your full moon in Libra, so to speak, because it's going to occur in your first house. And, and, um, it was just simply, you know, what degree it was. So, um, this is just a time when something in your life may be like a cycle in your life may be ending. And that's really exciting because it means that a new cycle is, uh, about to begin. So I hope that you enjoyed this Libra and I've been promoting my, um, latest offerings, which are double readings. And I've actually done one of them for quite a while. And, you know, it's quite popular, which is called the whole enchilada. And I combine a, um, natal chart, uh, analysis with transits, which is an hour long reading with a, a full length tarot reading. And because some people want to have the whole enchilada, you know, the whole experience. And then I have my, my newest double reading and this is a special price. That's part of, that's, that, that's an important aspect of it. Um, and then the, the latest I've been doing is like a two hour reading one hour for needle chart analysis, one hour for transits. And that is also for a discounted price. You That's called the deep dive. And I have all kinds of readings. Um, you can click on the link below to see more information about those and to order. And thank you for listening. I hope that you have a wonderful April. I really do, Libra. You guys are awesome. So take care. Bye.